For those who have witnessed a wedding objection during the speak now or forever hold your peace portion, what happened? Part 4 I was working at a wedding when I was younger. I was running the bar at the reception, which was very close to the hall the weddings were at. We were told that the reception would begin around 4 p.m. It was already about 3-ish and I was packing fridges, the usual barman things, while one of the male guests was still sitting there drinking. I asked if he was not joining the reception, to which he replied something along the lines of, when I have the courage. He downs his drink and leaves. Ten minutes later he's back, looking extremely disappointed. Guy orders a drink and less than 30 seconds later another guy who's dressed extremely well, turned out to be the groom, walks in, punches him in the back of the head and leaves. This dude just picked his drink up and sipped it further. I eventually found out that this dude had downed his drink, walked into the reception down the hall and admitted to sleeping with the wife on her few days before wedding day, and again the night before the wedding. He was never invited to the wedding, he just felt the groom needed to know. So he found out where the wedding was, suited up and dropped the info mid-ceremony. About five years ago, a co-worker of mine invited all of us to his wedding. He was a great guy but none of us had ever met his wife. Seen pictures of her and he always said nothing but good things of her. Fast forward to the wedding, it was an incredibly nice one, looks like they paid quite a bit for it. Everything was going smooth and I was having fun and assumed so was everyone else. Anyway, now they're both at the altar or whatever looking deeply into each other's eyes and smiling, and when that line comes of speak now or forever hold your peace, I get anxious but nothing ever happens. So right as soon as the anxiousness faded away, the bride's mother stood up and objected. Blurted some complaints about how she doesn't want to continue their family with a man like him, he was black she was white. The bride-to-be cried and ran off. The wedding went totally silent. The bride's dad took the mom and ran after the bride. The groom stood there incredibly awkwardly. He may or may not have achieved actually leaving his body. Anyway, the groom's men took him away. I left because it was too weird. Apparently, the reception went on. They did not get married that day. But ended up together anyway privately and surprisingly work wasn't weird. He laughed about it. And they are happily married. Edit. Just so I don't have to individually reply to everyone's comments and questions. The mother-in-law never truly stated it was because he was black. But this guy was incredibly nice, selfless, and just someone who you completely felt comfortable around. Never judged anyone either and well-spoken. The mother-in-law also never showed signs of hating him. Who knows why it happened? Maybe the bride and groom found out, I'm not sure. I since moved and haven't spoken to them, but man does that memory last. Musician here, play frequently at weddings, this was by far my worst one ever, not at the moment of speak now but still pretty impressive. Groom books my string quartet for the entire day, ceremony, drinks, meal. All seems to go well though you can tell the groom's family is much more well off than the bride's and she seems to be a bit of an attention seeker. But either way, the ceremony and drinks went without a hitch, everyone seemed very happy. Fast forward to the meal. We played through the whole thing and as we were packing up they started speeches. Usually we'd have left by this point but our stuff was in a little side room off the banquet room separated only by salon-style swing doors and we had no way of getting out unless we walked awkwardly between the guest tables, so we decided to stay put until the speeches were over and listen in. Best man's and father of the bride speeches went well, and then it was left to the groom. He thanked everyone for coming and then said that for his speech he needed everyone to open the envelopes that had been placed on the tables, we'd noticed these on the way in but hadn't thought anything of it. There was an excited bustling as people appointed someone on each table to open the envelopes, followed shortly by a very quick change in the atmosphere. Someone gasped, and another person audibly said, What the heck is this? Amongst the general confusion. The groom gets back on the microphone and says, Yes, I'm sorry to say that what you see in these pictures has been going on for about two months. Needless to say I will be annulling the marriage. Thank you all for coming. Turns out the bride had been having an affair with the best man and the groom had found out and hired a private investigator to photograph them at it. He'd printed the pictures and put them in the envelopes. Of course, 
Chaos ensued. The groom dropped the mic and bailed immediately. The bride's mother threw red wine all over her dress and kept screaming all the horrible names she could come up with along with an awful lot of things alluding to the fact that she'd never find another good rich man again. The groom's two brothers beat up the best man pretty badly. There was a lot of screaming and glass throwing. The bride was crying uncontrollably and everyone left as it was so awkward. We just hid in our little side room until everyone had gone and then emerged, slightly shell-shocked, to inspect the pictures. There could be no doubt as to what was happening in them. The groom emailed us a few days later and apologized to us as he realized we'd got stuck. He explained that he'd only found out a fortnight before the wedding, and having paid for everything with little chance of refunds, he just decided to go ahead with it and out her so that she couldn't twist the story to her family after the fact. How he made it through the entire wedding I will never know, but it certainly made for an interesting day at work. I've posted this before and my family found me but whatever, it's my cake day. True story. My father has been married five times, and at the last wedding it happened twice. July 7, 2007 the family and friends began to gather, all of us taking turns trying to talk him out of marrying the woman he had only met a few months before, but his mind was set. Since the date was so popular and arrangements were made so late, the minister was a used car salesman with a certificate from an online site. The wedding and reception were held in my father's backyard that happened to be right next door to his best friend, which he proves to be that day, I was re-signed to my fate of best man that day, my first and only time with that honor, when the ceremony began. My father began with a speech explaining how two people could meet and fall in love in such a short time and that he knew it was hard to believe and that's when his best friend, just in time from his fishing trip, raised his tanqueray and tonic to ask, is this the part where we object? Cause I'd like to. In all my life I've never witnessed the mix of relief slash shock slash humor slash horror and all the other emotions this stirred. My sister cried, his friends laughed, her family cringed, but my sweet grandmother was so stoic I'll never forget. My father calmly said, no bud, not yet, and went on. He began to talk about other relationships and people and how he knew this marriage would last. And that's when our hero spoke again, how about now? I really need to object to this. The same sentiment was felt throughout and yet my father replied, no bud, we're not doing that, and then turned to the minister and said, we should probably skip that part. The ceremony went on, and so did the marriage. For about six months. DL, DR. My dad's best friend objected at his wedding and my dad wished he had listened. I was a groomsman at a wedding two years ago. The bride and groom had been together for right around four years. They decided to write their own vows. The groom went through his, they were sweet as hell. He is a really great dude. The wife decided that during the vows is the appropriate time to let him and everyone else know that he would soon be a father. Everyone was crying, hugging, it was a pretty cool moment, especially being from the Midwest slash Bible Belt where that kind of thing normally gets frowned upon. Everything was going great up until a point in the reception where the bride was talking to a friend of hers telling her how excited she was to be having a girl. Somehow, no one caught this except the groom who got up, threw his drink at the wall and shattered it. Called his new wife a stupid hoe and told her she was cheating and stormed out. The bride started crying and swore she never cheated on him and couldn't believe he was ruining their special day. The other groomsman and I ran outside to see what was up with him, and then it hit all of us at the same time. She was 16 weeks pregnant and he had only been home from Afghanistan for 8 weeks. She didn't think that anyone would catch that, and was somehow going to try and convince her husband they were having the baby early. I have not heard much from him or her since the wedding, but it was heavily rumored that the pregnancy was a result of a one-night stand with one of my buddy's cousins. DL, DR, wife cheats on husband and gets pregnant while husband is overseas. She tells her husband she's pregnant, forgets the timeline of pregnancy when talking to a friend. This is a good excuse to tell one of my favorite stories. About two years ago I attended a wedding in Nice, France. It was my older cousin getting married to his girlfriend. She, the fiancé, was French and so is my cousin's dad. However, my auntie is from Scotland. So my cousin, James, the groom, is half French, half Scottish. Anyway, 
an argument ensued before the wedding as my family wanted the wedding to be in Scotland and my cousin's dad and future wife wanted it to be in France. They settled in France and to say the very least, my family was not happy. Me and my mum were happy for the excuse to go to France but my extended family was fuming. They just could not get over it. Anyway, we got to France two days before the wedding. On the day we went to a beautiful converted barn in Nice and waited as the barn filled up with family and friends. My extended family wasn't there and my cousin's dad was fuming that they'd refused to come due to it not being in Scotland. My cousin stood nervously awaiting his future wife, she came out and all went smoothly. They began the vows and when it came the time to object, almost an impeccable timing, the door to the barn opened and in came 15 to 20 of my extended family, dressed in kilts and three of them brandishing bagpipes. They stormed down the aisle playing the bagpipes, badly, and singing the Scottish anthem and football chants. Everyone in the barn turned horrified to see them storming around and singing. The bride laughed hysterically but my cousin didn't look happy. Then, my great uncle took to the stage and said, Ah James. I was going to scalp ya wedding behind but we decided it best they join the festivities. Congratulations from us all. The Scottish lot are in tune and we're here for the free bar and some frog's legs I. People erupted with laughter and even the French side of my family had a giggle. The wedding continued as normal and the beautiful, elegant reception was overrun with kilt-wearing clowns singing and dancing at every opportunity. Was a grand night and one I'll never forget. I. Two disasters. My Jewish friend married a Gentile woman. His immediate family were secular and didn't object but his grandmother started bawling loudly at the start of the wedding ceremony yelling in Yiddish for somebody to stop them and making a huge scene when the family tried to remove her. She said some other stuff in Yiddish as well but nobody was willing to translate whatever it was for us non-speakers. My nephew, who'd had a severe head injury and wasn't quite right got engaged to a very combative woman nobody liked, try though they did. It began at the rehearsal dinner. The father of the bride, she being the youngest of his eight daughters, unsteadily walked to my nephew's dad and stated, tell your son he's making a big mistake, she's the worst of the lot. The wedding itself actually went okay, but as the couple walked out of the church and went to get into the limo, my nephew decided to invite the best man and his date to ride with them. The bride wasn't having this and loudly declared so. Turned into a huge fight in the limo. Driver had to stop and drag my nephew out and put him in a separate car. Against all odds, the reception went off without bloodshed but proceedings didn't end well. They went to an island honeymoon resort and after two days, the owner kicked them out because of their unceasing screaming fights. The end took several more years. One night, my phone rang after midnight. It was my nephew calling from a phone booth. He tells me rather calmly, that she's trying to kill him. At that moment, there was a huge crashing noise, she had run the car into the phone booth. Fortunately, there were steel and concrete posts protecting the booth from just such a situation and he escaped relatively unscathed. She was too obese to pursue him any distance on foot. The divorce took two more years. So not during this part but. I was a wedding planner with a local company and that entailed me attending receptions to make sure everything ran smoothly. Prior to the ceremony, the grandfather asked me which room the groom was in so he could have a chat with him. I walked him to the room and he gave the groom plane tickets and hotel reservations completely paid for to Greece. The parents had told the bride and groom not to make plans after the wedding for two weeks, as it's customary in their family for grandparents to gift the honeymoon. The groom starts crying and thanks the grandparents. Groom puts the stuff in his coat pocket to thank the grandparents during the reception and surprise the bride. Ceremony over, everyone all smiles. Cocktail hour ends everyone sits down for dinner and they do the introductions. The entire bridal party is now seated. Best man, groom's brother makes a speech, sister of the bride matron of honor makes a speech. Groom makes a speech to his bride, I want to thank everyone for being here. Thank you to our family, the generous support, and to grandma and grandpa for giving us a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Greece. Cue bride crying, applause. But, he continues, I won't be taking this trip. Throws down everything from his pocket. My brother and wife should be taking this trip seeing as she's been screwing him for the last six months. And just walks out. 
my friends, we'll call them Brad and Janet, were getting married. This was a couple of years ago. Brad is bisexual. Brad's friends and family, including Janet, are all aware of this. Janet's family doesn't know as they are rather conservative and probably would have made a scene. Brad's best man is his ex, Frank. Brad and Frank were together for almost seven years and broke up because Brad wanted to get married and have kids, Frank didn't. They decided compromising would end up with one of them being miserable slash resenting the other person. Breakup was amicable but both of them were devastated. However they remained friends. Brad met Janet only two weeks after breaking up with Frank and proposed less than six months later. At the time of the wedding, they'd known each other less than a year but they seemed really happy so no one thought anything of it. The ceremony goes off without a hitch. Janet's maid of honor gives a really lovely toast that is quite a few people tearing up. Frank gives his best man speech right after. Now I found out after the wedding that Brad had asked Frank to not mention anything in his speech about their previous involvement, specifically because of Janet's family not knowing about his sexuality. Frank had agreed. However Frank was a little tipsy when he gave his speech. I knew things were about to go off the rails when Frank said, I can't do this. He goes on to say that breaking up with Brad was the biggest regret he had, that he still loved him and he knew that Brad still loved him too because he told him so. Frank gets escorted out of the reception. The rest of the night is very awkward. Brad and Janet go on their honeymoon but from what I was told they spent the entire time fighting. The fighting continued after they got home. During a particularly nasty spat, Brad reveals that he hooked up with Frank during his bachelor party and that yes, he did still have feelings for him. They gave it the old college try but Janet left Brad like 9 months after they got married. Janet is remarried to a great guy and is pregnant with her first child. I will be attending Brad and Frank's wedding in May. No objections, however the cake lady repoed the cake. My mom makes cakes and this one bridezilla family decided they weren't going to pay for the cake. Admittedly the cake was 20 minutes late being delivered. They never actually paid the deposit. Then once we were delivering it, the mother-in-law slash mother of husband? decided that wedding cakes have some 30 minutes or it's free guarantee. When they figured out that wasn't going to work and we still required payment, they said they flat out weren't going to pay because we've completely ruined their day. They also claimed that they ordered another cake from Walmart because we were late, sure buddy. My mother had to set up the cake anyway figuring she could reason with the bride herself. Of course the bride was more preoccupied with other events to respond. Most of the guests hadn't even arrived to the after-ceremony services anyway, they weren't married in the same place there was a bit of a drive between the two venues. After most of the guests had arrived and we were getting nowhere on payment, my mother had us repo the cake, and at this point the venue was full 200 plus people watching in awe. Footnote, she had assigned a contract but they never paid the required deposit, in her 30 plus years of doing this she figured she didn't want to ruin this lady's day so she made the cake anyway as she had given her the benefit of doubt. Later on we found out they tried the same stunt with the DJ. We ended up taking the cake to a local charity for kids, can't remember the name, they were ecstatic. I wonder how the festivities went afterward. I am a priest, here's a mildly interesting tidbit about this. In a church context, this question is a holdover from the days when the civil authorities had little to do with weddings and it was simply administered solely by the church, therefore it was the church's responsibility to ensure that nothing was amiss, most notably, issues of adultery or of consanguinity, being too closely related by blood. Now that couples must receive their marriage license from the state before being married in the church, this question is essentially moot as the state has already determined that barring some sort of identity theft, there are no impediments to their being married. We still ask because there may be reasons, such as adultery, that require investigation. If someone does object during a church service, it is protocol to take them and the couple into the vestry and determine what the source of the objection is. If it was a joke, they are a jerk for interrupting and we carry on. If it is real, like a groomsman sleeping with the bride the night before her wedding, then stuff hits the fan.